Hey guys, so in this video I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to do some product photography just behind me here in the studio and I wanted to show you a little bit of the behind the scenes of how I make that happen. So in today's video I'm going to be using a pitcher of water, just like this, nothing too crazy at all, very boring actually, and just your average light bulb. This may be burnt out or brand new, I'm not actually sure. It doesn't really matter. We're not gonna be using real electricity with water. That's a terrible idea. And so in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to turn just a pitcher of water and a light bulb into something that hopefully looks a little bit more interesting like this. And since I'm not a psychic, I don't actually know if it'll look interesting or not, but hopefully by the photo that you just saw, it'll be kind of an interesting result. Okay, so I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna set up a little bit of a base and a table with a tripod and a couple basic things, and we'll go from there. Okay, so what I have set up here is a tile just from Home Depot that you can get for a couple bucks. I just picked a black one with a bit of texture on it. I've got a stool set up just to prop it up so that my tripod um, can get low enough to actually shoot because I want to shoot straight um, across the light bulb. And then I have some plastic lids on the ground just so it makes a little bit less of a mess when the water splashes. And for this type of splash photography with the light bulb, I just need something to hold it in place. So I actually have a little bit of sticky tack here, which I'm going to pull off like that and I'm going to stick a little bit underneath the light bulb like that since we're not actually plugging it in it doesn't really matter and for the time being I'm going to set it right here like so there we go so I've got the illusion of the bulb just sitting there where it's just kind of floating and next up I'm going to need some lighting so I'm going to actually be using a portable flash for this so we'll take one of these. And for this type of photography too, anytime you're doing splash photography, you wanna make sure that you freeze the water completely. And so you need the light to go on and off, whatever light you're using, as quick as possible. So even those studio strobes and stuff like that, they look like the light is just for a split second. The higher power that you have your lights set at, the longer the duration of light. So what I'm gonna do is actually use a small portable flash. So this one here, it's the, SB700 from Nikon, a uh, really decent light. I'm going to actually have it set to a fairly low power. So I want to have it where it blows out all the other lights um, in this room so that it's only being affected by this. But at the same time, I want to have the setting as low as possible so that it flashes the light for a split second so it can actually freeze the water in the photo. When it comes time to mount your flash, there's lots of different ways. And so one of them that's the cheapest option is actually this. It attaches onto a light stand like one second actually just going to shut this off so i can actually use this stand because i only have so many light stands in the studio so the cheapest option to mount a flash to a light stand is one of these all you do is attach it to the top like this and then the flash clips on on top it's okay, it's not ideal, and it makes me a little nervous, especially when you're spending hundreds of dollars typically for a flash, you don't want it to fall off. And so the better solution, in my opinion, is for around 20 or 25 bucks, you can get what's called an S-mount, and that's what this thing is. So same idea, you screw it onto the top of a light stand like this, but it's way more stable because now I can actually take my light and it's really a giant clamp that the light goes through. So now I can just do this and attach it like that as soon as this is done. There we go. So now you can see this light is actually way more stable in there and I can position it and angle it any direction I want. Okay, so next I'm going to try to decide on what type of lighting I want to have. I'm picturing It'd be really cool to actually have this backlit from the back. So if the light's coming this direction and my camera is shooting this way, so I might just actually go with a single light setup for this. So what I'm gonna do is actually grab a soft box. I've got one right here. It's actually already set up, which is kind of convenient. Um, and this is, I believe a 36 inch uh, Octobox by the company Godox. It's a budget brand, it's pretty awesome. You can get them on Amazon all over the place. I'm gonna set up the light on the light stand over here. And it might be kind of obvious, but since this is a portable flash, it runs on AA batteries, so we don't have to worry about cords or wires or anything like that, so that's pretty awesome. I should say too um, that all my lights, I try to do my very best to actually make them all compatible with each other. 
So all the lights and all the light modifiers work together, which is pretty awesome. So I use what's called the Bowens mount system. It's pretty universal. And so it actually has three pins right here in the mount. And on, then there's three pins on every one of my light modifiers, like this. Like that, there's three pins. And then all you do is take the light and attach it like so. There we go, and it's locked in place. Good to go, we've got our light. Gonna just attach it to the light stand. The only downside with this softbox is it's a little bit on the heavy side. And so you just wanna make sure that your light stand post is facing the same direction as the light box so it doesn't tip over on you. And so my plan for this is actually to have the white of the uh, softbox actually be the entire background of the photo when I'm shooting this direction. So that's why I picked a decent sized softbox is so hopefully this will just fill up and it'll be pure white behind the light. So next I'm gonna set up the camera on the tripod. I've actually got it already somewhat set up right here. I'm using a Manfrotto tripod. It's a decent brand that I like and they're very reliable. Um, a little bit more expensive than some, but it's a good tripod. So I'm gonna set this up. And for this, I've also got my 24 to 70 2.8 lens uh, by Nikon. It's a really, really decent lens. The reason I'm actually using this is it has a fairly open aperture. So you can have shallow depth of field, but even more importantly, I can zoom in to 70 millimeters, which actually means I can actually go further away with the camera. In this case, it's just so that I don't get water on my lens. It's a minor thing, but I don't really want to deal with trying to clean that up right now. So I'm just going to set it up right here. And what I'm doing right now is actually setting it so that it's almost perfectly eye level with the light bulb. So I'm shooting so I can just see a little bit of the top of the surface. The light bulb's the focus, and I'm also getting it where the back corners are actually off of the photo, um, out of frame, just so that it actually looks like a big countertop instead of a tiny little tile like this. Um, for these kind of situations, I would completely make sure to use manual focus on your camera, just because otherwise you're gonna constantly have to refocus. And when you're using something like shiny reflective material, like a glass light bulb, uh, you just gotta make sure that you don't keep auto focusing and get it out of focus. That'd just be really frustrating. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna shut that off for now. And now I'm gonna turn on the flash. And like I was saying before with the portable flash, I wanna have it actually as low of power as possible, which seems a little bit counterproductive. But the idea is the lower the power of the flash is, the faster that split second of light will be hitting the camera and the sensor, and it'll actually freeze the motion of the water that will be moving really quickly. It'll be freezing it actually a little bit better. So in this example, I'm gonna be setting it to maybe 1 16th or 1 32nd power, which is actually really on the low side, but that's exactly what we're wanting. I almost forgot, but this is actually a really important part as well. These are the Yognuo, I believe they're called Yognuo, <laughs> a budget brand. Um, they're actually the transceivers, so they're triggers that make the flash wireless. And so they make it so the flash speaks to the camera. And so every time I hit the camera, the shutter button on the camera, the flash, even though it's way over there and it's wireless, it'll actually go off, which is kind of important. So I'm just gonna set this up on here. I think you can get these for like 70 or 80 bucks Canadian. It's really not expensive and I've had these for years, which is pretty awesome. I wouldn't hesitate to buy another pair of these as soon as they break because again, they're budget. They probably will end up dying eventually. And then the other one of these, this end, exact same. It'll just go on the bottom of the flash over here to make the wireless connection. And now that that's set up, I should be able to hit the shutter on the camera and the wireless flash will go off. Let's try it out. First test shot. Okay, and I'll show what's on my screen here on the video and so you can see what the first photo is. As you can tell, it's pretty blown out. That's not really the look we're going for. So let's dial in the settings a little bit better and make sure to be using manual mode on your camera. Like I mentioned in all my other videos, uh, that way you just have complete control over the photo and all the settings. So first I wanna pick our shutter speed um, for these photos, just like I mentioned in my other videos. So I'm gonna start at right around 200th of a second. Um, that's the sync speed on this camera. So that's as fast as this can go um, using flashes without worrying about um, high speed sync, which is a whole other thing. I, I can make a video about that later. So this is 200th of a second. Um, I'm gonna set the ISO on the camera. Um, if you remember from my other videos, you wanna have it as low as possible because the lower it is, the better quality of the photo, really. That's as easy as it is to explain. I'm gonna drop the ISO down to 100 as a starting point, like I always say. And then the f-stop, I'm gonna have it a little bit wider just because the ISO is so low, um, we still wanna have the photo correctly exposed. So I'm just gonna have the um, depth of field a little bit shallower to let in more light. That's all I'm doing. 
I'd much rather use a remote like this that's just maybe like 15, 20 bucks, something like that, that you can pick up. I'd much rather use this over hitting the shutter button on the camera each time, especially when we're gonna be doing multiple things, pouring the water, taking the photo, stuff like that. So I'm just gonna really quickly set up the camera just so that it can actually accept the remote. This will be different on each camera, depending on if you're a Canon, Nikon, Sony user. Okay, so there we go. So now, ideally, the trigger is still set up with the uh, flash wirelessly. Got my remote in hand. Now if I hit this, ideally, there we go. So ideally, every time I hit this, everything, the settings are the exact same on the camera every single time. It's on manual focus, so I don't have to worry about it refocusing. And the flash is wireless behind the softbox right here. So again, if I hit the remote, there we go. Perfect. And you can see the results. It looks the exact same as before. That's awesome. And now really one of the last steps is to start pouring some water and hope I don't have a huge puddle on the carpet right here at the end because that's a bit of a pain to clean up. So let's give it a shot. Got my pitcher of water. And this is actually a terrible idea. This water, there's way too much of it, I feel. I'm gonna grab a smaller pitcher so that it can pour just a little bit onto the light bulb at a time instead of this massive pitcher that you can just imagine that's gonna end really badly. So give me one second. There we go. So I just picked up my little uh, milk pitcher from my espresso maker upstairs, so that'll be perfect. You can use really anything you want. This is just what I've got, as long as it has a spout, because you want to have a specific direction for the water. Uh, one last thing I'm going to set up really quickly too is the sticky tack or the plasticine underneath the light bulb that's holding it in its place. I was doing that a little bit too quickly, so it's kind of messy actually under here. So what I'm going to do is carefully pull the light bulb off and I'm just tucking the plasticine behind it so that you see a lot less of that in the final photo. Again, we can use Photoshop for all of these type of things, but as best as possible, it's more fun and a little cleaner to be doing all these kind of things in camera so that when you get onto the computer to process the photo, it's as little Photoshop work as possible. Okay, really all that's left is to use my remote here that I've got in my hand. I've got my pitcher of water right here as well, and I will show you how we do this. So I'm gonna stand behind it. As long as I'm out of frame, it doesn't really matter. And just before I make a mess of the water, I'm going to take one picture to test it. Yep, looks good to me. And now if I make sure my hand is out of frame here, directly above the light bulb, if I pour this, I'm going to try my very best to time it, hitting the remote right when the splash of water hits the light bulb. So let's try this. Okay, so that's, <laughs> that's officially pretty messy. Um, let's actually, instead of cleaning this up right now, let's go over to the computer right around the corner and let's see how these photos turned out as we edit them. Okay, so we're back at the computer. Uh, my studio's right behind me right here, so it's super handy to have my little setup uh, right here. I'm going to start going through the photos that we were just working on a second ago. Okay, so now that they're all imported, I'm actually just gonna click through them really quickly. What I typically do is just flag anything that I think is even slightly interesting or maybe a possibility. And you can see right here too, sometimes when I'm shooting, especially when we're doing everything manually, pouring the water and also using the remote, sometimes it just doesn't line up. So photos like this, I wouldn't necessarily delete them, but again, we're not going to use those because there's nothing exciting about it. Keep going. Anytime I see a little bit of a splash like this, uh, it's interesting enough that I do want to flag it. Okay, now that we've done that step, let's actually just go down to the bottom right corner and we're gonna turn on filters just to show the flag photo. So you can see these are just my selections that I like. So now we'll go to the next module, the develop module here. So what I'm gonna do is actually just start to edit this a little bit. And again, you can actually see the effect that the low powered flash has. So if this was a studio strobe, full power flash, it would actually have motion blur in all these spots of water. That's not ideal, of course, for this type of photography. So you can see a low powered, smaller flash. That's actually what gives you the nice and sharp um, dots of water just mid air, which is pretty awesome.
So yeah, that's exactly how you do splash photography um, with a home studio setup like I've got behind me here. Um, fairly minimal budget as well. You need a couple of soft boxes or um, a couple little accessories like the flash and stuff like that, but, but really it's very approachable when it comes to um, photography. And during a pandemic like this, it's kind of handy. You can stay home and work by yourself, but also have a lot of fun with splash photography, a little bit of movement in your photos, why not? Yeah, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, like the video, comment if there's anything um, that you have questions about. Um, and please also uh, view some of my other videos. I've got a Photography Basics. Um, it's a really short mini course, a couple of videos that are just two or three minutes long each. Very approachable. Yeah, make sure to watch those and I'll see you next time. See ya.